companies from conceptualization to creation. If the company has created other entities such as Cenoplex, a unique mobile messaging platform for the cell phone industry, Manetta Pro, clo a closed loop transaction processing system, and Ronastar, an enterprise solution which empowers large corporations to save money. And he's developed many more uh, products, but I'd like Stephen to take it over. Uh, thank you. <coughs> And actually, it's LA. I just I end up down in San Diego speaking a lot, and our, our LA chapter's there. So um, appreciate your time. I'm going to fly through this. There's a lot of content, a lot of information. You guys will be able to get the presentation later. So for sake of time, let's start out with, because this is hiring fired, so I'm going to start out with what's the definition of leadership. Successful leaders are not the ones with the greatest vision or the most winning personality. They're the ones who actually do what they say they're going to do and execute on their goals. When you're talking about hiring and firing people, you need to be able to come in and say, people trust good leaders and follow them willingly because you do what you say you're gonna do. And then I've got a great quote here. Management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. Anybody know who said that? Drucker. Peter, Peter Drucker. So how many of you wanna be a leader, right? We wanna be a leader. This is what we want. We wanna be the big duck with everybody following us. But the problem is if we don't know where we're going, we're going to kill our followers. <laughs> so there's a lot about what makes a good leader. What you don't want to do is make the same mistakes somebody else has made. There's so much you can learn from books. Study the failures of other people. All right, we go into companies every time we start a new company, the number one question we ask every time is why won't this work? I go into everything soliciting negative criticism on why won't this work, and then that's what your true objections are to overcome. Why make the same mistakes? Have a vision, have a goal, and have the ability to articulate exactly what your goal is. Hiring is about creating a vision that people are going to follow. You have to be good. It's not a company. There's a difference between a business and a company. A business is something you and two or three people are going to do. A company is a grander vision. How big do you want to be? What are your goals? Is it big enough for others to follow? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you need to be successful? How many of you know exactly what your greatest strength is? How many of you know your greatest weakness? See, they're parallel. This is what most people think success is going to look like. That's what it really is. That's really smooth. Yeah, and the drawing's really crappy anyway. But here's the deal. On the outside, people look at you when you've been successful. They don't see all the crap you go through to get there. All right? But you need to go, hey, I'm going to be here. This is where I'm going. But there may be a lot of switches and turns and hitchbacks and what you guys call pivots. I like to call a tack. A pivot to me is a complete turnaround. A tack is sort of moving towards, but we know where our goal is. You can't get people to follow you if you don't know where you're going. Is focus important? Would you guys agree? This is a cool animation. If you don't look at it, can you guys see? You can't see in the far away. Can you see how everything's kind of spinning? Does it look? Sort of works. I'm going to fly through it. I want every one of you to pick a black dot. I don't care which one. Pick a black dot and stare at that dot and tell me what happens. Stops moving. This is what your life is like as an entrepreneur. Everything's spinning around you. Everybody's got something that's important. You need to pick. I didn't tell you which dot to pick. I said pick a dot and focus, and the world stops moving. You can't get people to follow you. The hiring aspect is so difficult if you don't know where you're going and you're not focused enough for people to know the direction. That's what life's going to look like if you're not prepared. The wheels are going to fall off because you're just full speed ahead, and you jump out and away you go. All right, so what we're going to talk about is planning. If you don't plan, life will look like this or this. That's a poor guy in a parachute jumping into a bunch of alligators, crocodiles. This is your best friend telling you it won't work. This is the venture guy. This is your cut. They're waiting to eat your lunch if you're not prepared when you're in front of them. All right, so. Your greatest strength is actually your greatest weakness. Who said they knew what their greatest strength was? What's your greatest strength? Inspire people. Okay. How's that your greatest weakness? Because 
other time when the two kids are what they think. Either that or you're so inspirational that you're not actually getting things done, right? My, my greatest strength, I have no problem saying it definitively, I can open any door at any level, get to anybody in any company or any country anywhere in the world without question. I've done it over and over again. And people go, well, why is that a weakness? Because I open the doors, but I don't close them. To me, getting to the next new person is the exciting part. Getting that deal closed is not what I do. So understand your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. As you build a company, as you try to find people, you're building your company around. Don't get people like yourself, but have a real sense of evaluation of what you're good at. Because if you don't, you're going to bring in a bunch of people you like and you're all the same, or you're not going to be honest with yourself and your team around where you need help. This is not what you want your life to be like. The true life of an entrepreneur says, please hold while I get to that department. Let me switch hats, right? The entrepreneur wears all the hats. I guarantee every one of you aren't good at IT. You're not good at marketing. You're not good at all of this. Initially, you may have to do a lot of these things. But when you're building a company, you don't want to be that guy doing everything. Would you guys agree with that? So what you've got to do as a CEO is you have two responsibilities. When you start out your company small, you're doing it all. But as you grow, all you need to be focused on as a CEO is two things. Are right, two things. Number one, raising money. Anybody want to guess what number two is? Raising money. No, close. <laughs> Hiring people. It is a full-time job to raise money and hire good people. And the more good people you hire, the more money you need because good people are expensive and you grow. So as a CEO, you need to say, how do I articulate a good message and how do I find good people? Because what you want to do when you recruit is you want to hire up. This one's really hard. You need to learn how to hire people better than yourself. You need to learn how to hire somebody that may be older than yourself. You need to hire somebody that may have more education. But the reason you need to do that is this is what you need to envision your company like. All right? And here's what I mean. Let's clear our minds for a second. How many of you, if you have the chance, would like to build a new house? Right? I mean, we can be honest. You may not want a house. Play along. <laughs> if you want a house, there you go. Perfect. Would you agree that to build a new house, you need a concrete foundation, you need to put the walls up, you need a roof, you need plumbing, you need painting, you need some art on the wall? Wouldn't we agree most of us could probably paint if we had to? Do we want to? No way. We could hang art, do we want to? No, your business, you need to look at your business the same way. It doesn't matter that you can do everything. You need to say, if I'm gonna go into marketing, who is the absolute best person that I can get for marketing? Who's the absolute best person I can get for business development? Who's the absolute best CFO? And by best, I don't mean the guy down the street. I mean the best. If the best CFO, if you're going into a business and, and say you're doing mobile, all right, Cineplex for us is mobile. Our COO, we've got an advisory board, all right? This is not only about hiring and firing employees, but this is also about advisory boards. Our advisory board is uh, Bob Belasso, the former CEO of Verizon, Bill Clinton, uh, Spin Christian Nielsen, the president of Ericsson Worldwide, Rob Blumenthal, head of Virgin Mobile, Paul Wilcox, CTO of Cineverse. Now, you guys may not know him, but anybody that's in the mobile space, these guys are legends. Because we went out and said, who's the best person that we could get in the switch world? Oh, Spin Christian Nielsen. We went after him. So when you're thinking about hiring and firing, when you're thinking about building a company, you need to ask yourself, what are the aspects of the component I need in my company? And then who are the best people out there? And realize some of these people you go after might be advisors. They might be strategic relationships. They might be guys who are looking to leave a company and come in. Or they might be the number one business development guy, the number one IT guy. 
kind of the same thing. When we were building the, the mobile application for Cineplex, we had something that was parallel to Double Click and Dart. Does anybody know what Dart, Double Click? Google bought them for about four and a half billion dollars. John Sabello was the VP of technology, built the whole thing. We went, wow, we need somebody like that. We went after John Sabello and targeted John. All right, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But think of your company as building a house, and if I could build my company with the best possible people, who are they, what do they do, what do I need? How do you gauge somebody quickly? This is the pace palette test. We're gonna do this real quick. Who wants to be a volunteer? Who wants to be guinea pig? There's no right or wrong answers, guys. This is simple. What's your name? Joe. Joe, what are your numbers left to right? 19, 10, 13, 8. 19, 10, 13, 8? Yep. All right, who else wants to, to go next? I'll go. Okay. 12, 11, 12, 15. 12, 11, 12, 15. Joe, what's your name? Chris. Chris. All right, the first column, write an R for red. Second column, write a Y for yellow. Third column, write a B for blue. Fourth column, G for green. Here's what this tells me about Joe. Joe is a high red, 19. I will give you guys the breakdown of what this means, but basically, here's what reds are. Reds are hyper aggressive. They are persistent. They're exciting. They like variety. The things that stress out reds, nitpickers, rules, negativity, lack of consideration. In an office environment, if you walk in, Joe's going to have trophies, plaques, pictures of himself with famous people. If you say, hey, let's go climb a mountain, Joe, you know what Joe's going to say? Let's go. It's all about charging ahead with reds. Yellows. Yellows, moral, family values, spiritual, the aggravators, unfairness, lack of compassion. Yellows are organized. Have you ever walked in somebody's office and their office is organized, color-coded, everything's in place, plaques are on the wall? Those are yellows. Having reds and yellows work well together because Joe probably needs somebody to organize his files and do his taxes because he's out trying to climb a mountain. Everybody's a little different. What a yellow does when you say, hey, let's go climb a mountain, they're all about planning. All right? The blues. Blues. Friendly. Family. Fun. You walk in a blues office, there's pictures of their dog, their family, their cat. Things that aggravate blues. Lies, unfaithful, opinionated. Blues like self-help books. Their office is messy. A blue. The number one question, if you ever tell somebody, hey, we're going to go to a party, we're going to go climb a mountain, we're going to Vegas, the only thing a blue wants to know is... Who's going? They, they don't care what or, hey, who's going? Who's going to be there? Blues are all about harmony. Greens, independent knowledge. Greens hate incompetence and stupidity. <laughs> Computer, electronic gizmos for office. Greens are the scientists. All right, here's why that's important. I'm high red, high blue. High entrepreneur, but I like the, the, the culture of having people work together. I am not detail oriented. So for me, for example, if I bring in an assistant, this isn't to, to, to you know, do title creep, but an assistant for me has to be high yellow, high blue. They have to be detail oriented and they have to be friendly to the environment. If they're red, yellow, they're gonna steal everything I'm doing. If they're red, green, they're gonna ask too many questions. I don't have time for questions. I need them to do it and like it. <laughs> Engineers are, see, the, the pace palette test, this is so simple. When you start building a team, I've done this for so many years, but I'll get six or eight of our guys when we're first starting the company, they've never met each other. I'll put this up, I'll do it on the board, and I'll have everybody's numbers there. Because if Joe and Chris are gonna work together, see Chris is a 12, 11, a 12, and a 15. He's low red, high green. Chris and Joe might be good partners, they might be good co-founders, because Chris is gonna balance out He's going to ask more questions. He's not going to charge ahead. Joe's going to be out. When you start bringing in co-founders, when you look at hiring people, learning the personalities is really, really important. Last component, lower right-hand corner, it's a picture. Anybody want to guess? It's a woman. Is it a, anybody see the old woman there? It's an old woman. She's kind of looking down her nose, her, her chin's down. She's got a little necklace. Does anybody see the old woman? Got it. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong picture. It's actually a young woman. If you look, the young woman's looking to the side over her shoulder. Does anybody see the young woman? 
Here's the deal. Some people can only see one or the other. Some people can see both. This is important because when you're building a company, you will get in arguments, discussions, where you are both right, but you're both wrong. You're both saying the same thing, but you hear something completely different. The aspect of being very clear when you're hiring somebody is critical because you say something and you think they hear it, they hear something different. You're saying there's an old woman and they're like, yeah, yeah, but they see the young one. All right, so this stuff is just really simple, but from a personality test, learn that when you're building the team, there's some cool things you can do. So what kind of employees do we want? Right? Do we agree we want employees as we're expanding? Well, we could take a bunch of cats. Right? We could take a bunch of cats and we like independent people and you know we don't want to be babysitting. We could say no, we want lions and tigers. We want a regal group of employees. You know, they look good and they're out and they're strong. We could say we want crows. Good part about crows, right? As the crow flies, straight across, get things done. Or we could say, no, we want a bunch of rhinoceros. We want ones that are just going to charge straight ahead and get stuff done and not ask questions. Here's what I found fascinating when I did this. Anybody know what a group of cats is called? Right, this, is, this isn't a trick one, but it's called a herd. Does anybody know what a group of exotic animals are called that are not similar? It's not called a pride. It's called a destruction. <laughs> a group of crows is called a murder. And a group of rhinoceros is called a crash. Here's why that to me is important. These are not good terms. <laughs> what we want to be is we want to be an eagle. <laughs> we want to soar above. We want to be regal. But the problem is, eagles don't usually flock together. This is what you really want. Here's why. Does anybody know what a group of eagles is called? It's called a convocation. And the term convocation means a group of people brought together for a special purpose. That's what you want your company to be. You want people that are independent but are going to follow together for a special purpose. It's up to you to define that special purpose. It's up to you to set that vision, but it's also up to you to find the best possible people you can. However, don't get enamored by big titles. Big titles means, I'm not going to make you guys guess on this one. Big titles means big infrastructure. Here's what I mean by that. We've made this mistake before. We don't make it too often now. You'll be able to go get somebody, God, I think I'm from Chicago so long, Sears, probably not a good example, Motorola, I don't. Let's say you get some big title guy out of Motorola, and I think Alex was making this point. The guys out of Motorola with the big titles don't know how to work PowerPoint. The guys with the big title don't book their own travel. The guys with the big title don't know how to print anything. They read their email because somebody else prints it for them. Big title, big infrastructure, big problem. Use them as advisors, but bringing people in that have big titles is really, really dangerous in an early stage company. So when you're trying to figure out who to hire, really be careful about this one. Here's a big one. This is called Stephen Covey's Four Quadrants of Time. Anybody ever seen this? Pretty simple. I'm not going to spend time. There's things called urgent and important. There's things that are not urgent, but still important. There's things down here in this quadrant three that are urgent, but not important. And then quadrant four is not urgent, not important. The majority of people fail because they spend their time in quadrant three. Phone call, email, somebody popping in your office because you have an open door policy. Hey, can I talk to you for a moment? No, I'm working. See, the most productive time for most people anymore is, well, it used to be, now it's changing. The most productive time for executives is the three hours on the plane when they're not connected to any interruption. Any of you travel? Do you get caught up on a lot of email and stuff? Because this is a killer. 
How does that relate to hiring and firing? Like this, this is my own quadrant. We've done this so many times. You're gonna look for people that have time and interest. Time, interest, background, credibility. No interest in time is okay. Not everybody's gonna love what you do. You guys don't like everybody else's company. You don't, you know, you don't all like the same kind of food. You don't need everybody to like you. Interest in time, interest in no time, and then no interest, no time. This is my favorite, by the way. Fast knows better than a slow maybe. Somebody that has no interest in no time is great because I don't waste any mental capacity on them. I don't take any of it personally. This one, though, is a killer. You guys will get sucked in to somebody who has all the interest and all the background and all the credibility, and they're so excited, and they have no time. And you're going to be going, well, but he's interested and he's got this big time. He can do all these things and he has no time to get anything done. Set a time limit. We just had to go through this with one of our companies. The guy we brought in was CFO of a global company. He launched a billion dollar side of a gaming world. He was CFO, CFO of a huge multi-billion dollar company. And our environmental products company is so excited and the guy has no time. And we kept waiting for him to do something and all. No, just remember, don't get sucked into quadrant three. Does that make sense? Okay. Moving on, asking good questions, especially when you're hiring, right? If you know what your own strengths and weaknesses are, ask somebody else, hey, what is your greatest strength? What do you think your biggest weakness is? Not only will that tell you how they may fit, it also tells you how introspective that person is on their own evaluation of their talents. Having somebody try and impress you by saying, oh, I, I have lots of strengths. What are your weaknesses? Oh, I don't have any weaknesses. You have a problem coming. People that are honest in these evaluations help you when you're building a company. Press people on them. This is my favorite. This will tell you almost everything you need to know when you're hiring and recruiting somebody. To Alex's point, I, what I, did, I ran sales training for six years in a financial services company. I trained, I hired probably 8,000 people in six years. What I convinced them to do, tell me if any of you guys are ready to go do this, because I'll tell you now, and then give me two minutes with you and I will change your mind. What we did is we sold life insurance on full commission at night to your best friend. Anybody want to sign up for that deal? Give me two minutes, because what I could do is say, what do you like most about your last job? And you could tell me, without knowing what I'm doing, well, what do you like least about your last job? What would you alter or change? And that would tell me the story of the emotional value of what I needed to sell you on in coming to work with me. When you're trying to hire people, when you're trying to recruit them, it's hard to get them to come into an early stage company. It's hard to get them to believe in what you're doing. You need to shift from selling your dream to selling theirs. They may be frustrated at their job. They may have no opportunity. They may, I'm gonna pick on Alex only because he went first. They may only have the opportunity to make 20% more and they wanna make 50. This is a matter of finding out what somebody else's dream is and figuring out how to get that into your company. Everybody's got different reasons. It's, it's, a, it's a term we created called whiffu whiffum. What's in it for you, what's in it for me? You coming to work in our company has nothing to do with me, it has everything to do with you. I need to sell you on your dream of how that fits in our company. You guys need to learn the same thing. What do you like most? What do you like least? What would you alter or change? And ask the tough questions. There's always an elephant in the room. There's always a question you know you should ask and you're afraid to, ask it every time. Because if you don't ask it early, it will bite you later. Right? Be tough. It's hard. Ask tough questions. We've all probably heard this one, hire slowly, fire quickly. If you get better at doing a lot of the research on the front end, you won't have as many issues. You're still going to have them. But bad morale, bad temperament, um, I call it the dumbing down of America. The crab theory. Does anybody know what the crab theory is? I mean, when, when you're in sales, you have so many. No, does anybody know what the crab theory is? 
You do? Put a bunch of crabs in a bucket, they'll pull each other down and climb out. Exactly. If you put one crab in a bucket, true, true part here, put one crab in a bucket, that crab will crawl out. You put a bunch of them in, none of them crawl out because they're all pulling you back down. These are your employees. Your bad employees bring everybody else down. Either because they suck at the performance, or the guy that's working his butt off late at night goes, why should I do that when the guy next to me is working half as hard as I am and getting paid the same amount? Screw it, I'm going home. So dangerous to have people in that aren't performing. It kills you when you're building a company. This is one of my favorites. Negotiate early and often, or people think they have more. There's a blank line here. Does anybody want to guess? There's no right or wrong answers, but come on. People think they negotiate early and often, or people think they have more power. Power's a good one. You must, you're the attorney in the room. <laughs> Value. Same thing. Here's the analogy. Here's the guy smiling. He just opened a restaurant. This is you. You are the entrepreneur. Here's what you did. You spent the last three years saving your money, finding the best location for the restaurant negotiating with people, looking at menus, determining what works, putting your company on the line, putting your house on the line, opening a restaurant. That's your three years of blood, sweat, and tears. And then you go out and hire the chef. And a month or two later, everybody's showing up in the restaurant and who thinks they own, own that restaurant? Who thinks they run it? The chef. Oh, people are showing up for me. It's my, they're showing up for, this is the danger of co-founders. This is the danger of not negotiating early because you want to see how people work out. The longer somebody is in your company, the more problems they help you solve, the more involved they are in the market and the strategy and the movement, the more they think they are a partner and you are screwed. Because you think they're a 5% guy and they think they're a 50. Have to negotiate early and often. But there's a trick. Don't get winkle bossed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and this is, this is the kudos to the attorneys once you get the paperwork down. Get your paperwork right. What I mean by that is NDAs, confidentiality, IP. We built a lot of software. People have to evaluate it. We have specific IP confidentiality agreements that Jeff Rubenstein and Mitchell Roth and all my guys did on our software, which I tried to track them down now here tonight. IP assessments, and this one, don't ever negotiate over email. When you're talking about bringing people in, you're hypothetically talking numbers, you're hypothetically talking it, you know, percentages, you're hype, no, you aren't hypothetically doing anything, you are negotiating. In your mind, it's hypothetical. and the person on the other end, you are negotiating. And those emails will show up when it's no longer a negotiation. It is a deposition. No. You don't want that to happen. Negotiate early and often. And we got this down pretty well. And, and you guys will get all this. What we've done, and we've been really successful at this, we negotiate a term sheet in advance. This lets us bring really good people in. This was an equity compensation agreement for an interim president in a company that we were building. It was actually in the mobile space as well. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what we were going to be. So this person got a 1% immediate grant for services. So we, enabled, we were able to use his name, gave us big credibility. Then we tied triggers, a 1% bonus participation for closing of a specific sale within 60 days. We targeted, identified, and isolated a sale. A performance bonus for closing an angel amount of 100,000 or more in 45 days, 2% of 250 or more within three if it's over 500,000 in 90 days. So the guy could get up to 5% in a performance bonus. Not a, oh great, here you have it and well, let's hope it works. And then this is the trick. If the advisor moves to full time, which you can clearly define. His salary and equity compensation will be X amount per year to be determined contingent upon proper funding and his compensation is up to 30% but it was vested over time. 
Here's why this is important. We were able to get a really, really big name guy. His total compensation in the company was upwards of 30%, 35. But everything past 1% was performance based. So it allowed us to get excited to use his name. And I'll tell you this, how many of these triggers do you think he, he accomplished? None of them. I had three of these term sheets out. We went through three presidents and CEOs in this mobile company until we got it right. The fourth guy we've got in, we've closed our fourth round of funding. He's been amazing. When we went through all the due diligence, our attorneys went and go, oh, well, you had three prior CEOs. How much equity do they have? I said almost none because we had a term sheet that put the carrot out front but didn't give them anything initially. This one's critical. Negotiate early and often, but tie things to triggers that happen in the future. Tie things to triggers that are performance-based. So you can protect your equity, but you can still put a big carrot out there to try and get really good people. All right, finishing up here. This is the basis of everything you guys will do, and, and I don't mean hyperbolically everything, but there's something out there called a tornado technique. Tornado technique will help you when you're trying to hire somebody. Tornado technique will help you when you're trying to bring in an advisor, when you're trying to find somebody, when you're trying to find um, a salesperson, when you're trying to find a company, a customer. Here's how the tornado technique works. Basically, how many people have seen a tornado? What's the most powerful part of the tornado? Yeah. Good guess, good guess. There is no eye in a hurt in a tornado, and you're wrong on two accounts, but thank you for participating. <laughs> the eye of the hurricane is actually the calmest. So a tornado doesn't have an eye, but a tornado has a tip. The very tip of the tornado touches the ground. That is all of the destruction. If that tornado never hits the ground, there is no destruction. It's called a funnel cloud. It's not a tornado. Here's how you become very, very effective. There is an emotional value of what you do. What that is, I don't know, but every one of you can struggle and you can figure out there's an emotional value, there's an industry or company that you're good at, there's specific companies you're trying to meet within there, there's a specific title or person you're trying to get to, you need to research and find that exact person. Here's what I mean by that. What do we have up here? Oh, we have Wet Rock. Okay, this is the environmental company we're doing now, so I'll use this one as a quick example. Here's Wet Rock. Pretty simple, emotional value. We have an environmental product called the Dropbox that saves water, plastic, and power. People are trying to save water. Our goal is to save 10 billion gallons of water a month. We've created an engagement program where we're getting really big companies to buy the product and give it away from us. The industries we're going into are automotive, retail, hotels. Companies we're in discussions with are Starbucks, McDonald's, Shell, UPS, Dell, Clinton Global. Within these organizations, we deal directly with the sustainability office, or the CSR, Chief Social Responsibility. And the people we're trying to meet right now are Mike Duke, Vino Kosa, Alan Salzman, Doug Van, and James Woolsey. This is a 40-second presentation of what our company does. Here's why it's, it's kind of interesting. How many people know Mike Duke? Okay, good. Vinod? few more, which would make sense. Alan Salzman, Doug Band, James Woolsey. One guy back. Must, you're in the software security stuff, that's why. Mike Duke, chairman of Walmart. Met him twice. Vino Kosla, haven't met him yet. Alan Salzman runs a $10 billion venture fund in the green space. Doug Band created Clinton Global Initiative for Bill Clinton, and James Woolsey's the former CIA director. When I said, Go for the best people. This was the list of who I wanted to meet. I wanted Mike Duke at Walmart. I wanted Alan Sullivan. I wanted Doug Band. I wanted Bill Clinton. We identified them, used the tornado technique, and were able to isolate down exactly who we wanted to meet. And that's what we asked for. If you need a CFO, go find the name of the best CFO. If you're going into a, a, a new industry, say, Here's what we do, here's the value, here's the industry, here's the company, here's the title, here are the three people I want to meet right now. Identify and isolate who you want, whether it's advisors, whether it's employees, whether it's attorneys, it doesn't matter. This is a real simple technique. Does that make sense? All right, we're almost done. 
Pick specific people. I'm not going to link out to this. How many people saw uh, the 300? All right, there's a great scene at the top of a mountain. King Leonidas is standing up there, and I won't butcher his accent too bad, but an army's walking up to meet him, and Leonidas and the Spartans had 5,000 members. They were the elite forces of their time. But for reasons we won't go into, he's only able to take 300. And at the top of this mountain, a great dramatic scene plays out. And this other army walks up, and the king looks, and he goes, Oh my God, what? you bring so few soldiers. And in the background, his little minions are going, We've been tricked. And the king, Leonidas of the Spartans, stands up there and says, Ah, so few soldiers. 5,000 men, he's looking out on 300 behind Leonidas. And he looks at the guy and says, You, what is your profession? I goes, I'm a potter. And you? Sculptor. Mm. And you? Blacksmith. Blacksmith. And he turns to his 300 men and he says, Spartans, what is your profession? And they all scream in unison. And his point was 300 soldiers, 300 highly trained people to do a specific job is better than 5,000 men who are just showing up. You need to build a company with a small group of people with a common goal and a common thread and a single passion to do something great. You've got to set that, but they all have to buy in. It's not about numbers, it's about execution. So, don't give up. Here's, a, here's an interesting little story of a guy who went into debt. You know, you guys can read it. His partner died. And he asked a girl to marry him. He got, you know, tried Congress. You guys know this story, right? Went for Congress, went for Senator, fail, 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 third try. Son died when he was age 45. Basically, became president at age 51. It's Abraham Lincoln. Right? Read books. Learn what other people. You look at Lincoln and go, he was the greatest president. This guy failed over and over and over and over and over again to finally succeed at age 51 to become one of the greatest presidents. Study success, study failure. And then build your own story. Here's another one. You guys can guess who this is. This guy started as an employee, had a great idea. Nobody believed in him. He kept saying, I can do this. This is a great idea. He was $2 million in debt personally, $2 million 30 years ago. Created a national chain as a globally recognized brand. What was it? No. Starbucks and Howard Schultz. Starbucks is 30 years old. You guys believe that? 30. Here's the point. Find a hero in your business. Find a hero that you want to emulate. Read and study what that person went through and then do this. When times are tough, ask yourself, oops, back up. What would Harold do? What would Steve Jobs do? You know, if, I, if, if, if I'm Steve Jobs and I'm faced with this decision, what would this person do? Take yourself out of it and study the success of other people because times are going to be tough. What do you tell others? We're finishing up. We're almost done. What's your belief? What are your goals? What's your conviction? What do you say when questioned on being an entrepreneur? Are you guys ever challenged by family, by friends, coworkers, executives, attorneys, VCs? Should I go on and on? All right, here's mine. I don't, I don't have to say this anymore, but it was fun to say it for a while. People go, oh, well, you know, what if you don't make it? What if you fail? What if your business doesn't work? And I'd say, well, here's the deal. I'm following my dream. I set my own hours, I get to work with people I like, and if I make it, I change my family tree forever. I get to live an amazing lifestyle, I get to retire my parents early, I get to send my niece and nephew through school, I get to donate back to my college, I get to fund my own soccer team, but you're right, if I fail, I can always go get a job and I'll be just like you. <laughs> that to me is failure. I'm, I'm pursuing what I want to do. I can always fail and get a job and be, don't listen to the people that have nothing that you want. Is that too hard? Trust me, try this on somebody who short circuits them. It's kind of like the people at Starbucks when you order a cold drink in the winter. They say, well, you know it's cold out. And I say, well, they order hot coffee in the summer. You short circuit people. Trust me, it works. Okay, <laughs> bonus slide. Real quick, only two slides left. You guys can read through this later. Greatest strength is greatest weakness. 
People do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. People make decisions emotionally and defend them logically. That's why you can't rationalize with people in bad relationships or bad companies. It's an emotional decision. There is no logic. Realize that. If you say it, they doubt it. If they say it, it's true. You telling a person, hey, you should really come work for me, has zero relevance for that person saying, I can't wait to come work for you. Figure out how to get an emotional trigger. If you say it, they doubt it. They say it, it's true. Questions are the key to the universe. Ask lots of questions. Lots and lots of, why won't this work? What do I need to do to get better? Who can help me? Who, can, who do you know that does exactly this? 99% of the things we worry about never happen, so why worry? Just realize that. Do the math. Any of you guys that worry about stuff, calculate how many times it actually happens. You'll be right on. Three R's, recognition, referrals, and revenue. This is actually also called uh, contacts, compensation, and credit. Somebody makes an introduction for you, give them credit. People love the recognition. Give them contacts, help their business, figure out compensation, you know, because you'll need a lot of people helping you. He who speaks first loses, ask why, not, ask not why, ask why not. Last slide, tips for networking. You guys start doing any networking events? Right? Hiring and firing is about finding good people. A lot of the really good people are going to be on panels at events you're at. Here's what I do, and this is it's a little stalkerish, creepy, but <laughs> it, it works. If, if Alex was up here after the panel, would you guys agree, any of you that have ever been to a big conference, a long line of people line up to talk to the speaker? And usually we're waiting in line, right? Maybe there's a person in front. I go up. I stand right by the speaker. <laughs> and he'll look at me sometimes and I'm just, but here's why. I listen to the questions being asked. I listen to how that CEO answers the hard questions of people in an audience. And I also get the benefit of hearing 30 people pitch what they do to the guy. <clears throat> so rather than me standing in line meeting the person in front of me and behind me, I get the benefit of hearing 30 people pitch the speaker. So by the time I talk to the speaker, I know exactly what to do. I just did this with Ted Kennedy the other day, or Bobby Kennedy, I can't remember, one of the Kennedys. Yeah. Who's the guy that does the river keep? This is on film, so he'll get me in trouble. The river keepers, the, Ted's dead. Bobby, right? Tell him, the tall guy can't be a politician because he sounds like he's crying. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard his voice. It's, it's, anyway, one of the Kennedys, but I stood there and I listened to every question and by the time almost everybody was done, he turned to me and I said, well, Mr. Kennedy, really what I need to do is talk to so-and-so in your office. We're doing this. It fits right into your Nestle program. And I know Mr. Woolsey and Woolsey told, you, told me to tell you hello. And he looks at me and goes, do you have a pen? I said, yes, sir. He goes, okay, write down my personal number. He said, okay. Call my office, tell them you spoke to me. I'll help you later. I'm like, great. It was a 20 second conversation. But I had stood there for 20 minutes. <laughs> but you learn so much. So just do homework in advance. Learn a lot about how to leverage your time more importantly and more effectively. That's it, thank you.